I came to Usha College about a year ago to have a look around and try and figure out a way of making a work that resonated with the chapels and the whole environment. And there were two things that interested me. One was the Pujin lectern, this magnificent eagle. And the second was a book written by William Allen, which had annotations by a character called Richard Topcliffe. And I'd come across Topcliffe before reading a book on the murder of Christopher Marlowe and the Elizabethan spy network. And he was described as being Elizabeth I's top priest hunter and torturer. He was responsible for whippings and mutilations and the rack, an altogether sadistic, evil man. Topcliffe was part of the machinery of Elizabethan state security. And in this book, this one document, you had a plea by William Allen for the Protestants to stop persecuting, torturing and executing Catholics. And then this annotation by Topcliffe, the torturer, saying that this was all nonsense. So you had these two opposing sides of this conflict between the Catholic and Protestant religion and all happening on this one page in the document. So I wanted to build some kind of work around this, around this duality or this opposition. And I came back to the eagle designed by Pugin and thought maybe we can use this emblem, this kind of symbol of religion, of the dissipation of, of God's word around the world. So I decided I wanted to incorporate Pugin's eagle in the work that I was making as part of the installation and to make a mirror image of that golden structure. And I thought if I stripped away all the grandiosity, took away the gold and the feathers and all the embellishments and took it back to its raw skeleton. So you saw it more like a kind of a, a, a cold mechanical machine, something that was designed to do a job. And in this case, it was the job of persecution, torture, mutilation and killing. So this eagle became this kind of cold, calculated, silver, steel killing machine. So basically I took the skeleton of the eagle and then we started to build like an armature which could be operated mechanically so we could run it on 13 different servo motors to animate it and to have it raising its wings, looking around, lifting its claw and just looking like a predatory beast while facing this other golden eagle of Augustus Pugin. We'd been making the eagle in the workshop for months and it was looking interesting and it was looking quite good. Um, but it's only really when you bring it here that it has um, the, the, the power brought to it by this backdrop, this kind of crucible of religious belief. And when you witness it against these kind of highly ornate and uh, very richly embellished surfaces. It takes on different meaning. It adopts this kind of mantle of the sacred. And then there's, there's something about that that gives the work a charge. Where do I stand on it? I don't think I'm gonna to touch on whether I am a believer or not. Um, I'm interested in all the trappings of religion. Uh, you can have your relationship with God, but the church itself, it's this organization that adopts a lot of rituals and a lot of visual iconography in order to dress up and, and ordain this, this belief. I'm quite curious to know how important these embellishments are and what it means when you strip them all away and can your faith still survive without all, all of the trappings and all of the, um, the other elements that, that come with the religion.